Hey, what's up everyone? Andy here with a super important topic, creating strong passwords. So today I wanna to talk about my top seven golden rules for maintaining strong password protection. Now first, maybe you might find yourself saying, hey Andy, wait a minute, why do I need a crazy set of password rules at all? I'm just a regular person. I'm not a CIA agent and I'm not a billionaire. And Well, one, I would say, hey now, believe in yourself. But second, I would say that it doesn't matter because your online identity, your personal information, your data, it all matters, no matter who you are or what you do. I mean, a lot of times we, uh, we as users just don't realize the potential of the information we could use to set up online accounts or how the choices we make on those accounts can be just as important to protect. Bottom line, it all matters and you want to protect it against hackers who would sell your information or steal your identity. So let's get into it. The seven golden rules for a strong password. First up, when it comes to passwords, it's important to create different passwords for different services. For example, imagine if you had one key that opened your car door, your home, your office, your security box at the bank, and so on. That would make you pretty nervous, right? Because if someone finds your one key, then your whole life becomes super vulnerable. So it's the, it's the same thing with passwords. If a hacker manages to get into your, to, to one account, then they can get into all your accounts. That's why it's essential to have different passwords for different accounts. Okay, so now you know that uh, you need a different password for different uh, accounts. This brings up golden rule number two, change your passwords regularly. And I don't mean once every couple of years when you try to log in somewhere and, and you forget the password, so you have to reset it. Now I get it, I get it. It can be hard to remember to change the, your, your passwords. The good news is some applications have settings that actually remind you to change your passwords. For example, if you're using Windows, uh, then you can opt in to change your Windows login password at, at set intervals. So if you go to your password policy under account policies, then you can enter the exact number of days you want to go between passwords. And if you don't have that option, then you can always set a calendar reminder on your, your phone, it's, it's that easy. All right, let's move on to rule number three. Choose the right password, also known as a strong password. But what does that actually mean? Well, in, in general, passwords should be at least 16 characters long, and they should contain a combination of numbers, symbols, and both upper and lowercase letters. Also, they, they shouldn't be an actual word. And yes, that includes your dog's name. So that, uh, that sounds like it could be tricky, right? But there are tricks to make it easier to remember. For example, consider creating a random password out of a phrase. Let's say I wanna use the phrase, I have three pink goats and five cats in the house. Uh, by the way, it isn't true, but that would be cool. Anyway, I could take the first letter in each word and the number to generate a seemingly random password. In this case, it would be something like IH3PGA5CITH. And that sounds random, right? That's great. So you can keep this trick in mind and use it to create a strong password. Uh, but don't use that one. Let's take it. Also, let me know in the comments below if you have any fun tricks to remember passwords or just tell me your favorite passwords. I won't tell, I promise. Anyway, a strong password is really important. That said, it's always good to add an extra layer of security. That's where my, my number four rule comes in. Opt in for two-step authentication, which is also known as two-factor authentication. Uh, now I go into to really in-depth into two-factor authentication in another video, so I have put the link to the video uh, in the description for anyone that's interested in doing a deep dive into that subject. But basically, two-factor, two-step authentication is a pretty simple way to add more security when you log in somewhere. And a lot of places already offer it as an option. For example, when you sign into Gmail or Facebook, uh, the site asks you to enter a code that is sent to your phone. 
That way, even if someone guesses your password, uh, it would be hard for them to get past the two-step verification. Uh, I mean, it's fast, it's, it's clever, it's super functional, so why not? Okay, so next up on my list is rule number five. And this is real easy. Disable autocomplete on your computer for usernames and passwords. Now I get it, of course it's annoying when you have to constantly have to type in your password every time you visit a site, but it's really important, uh, especially if you're on a, a public computer or one that you might share with someone else. So in most browsers, you can go into your settings to disable autofill for your passwords. That said, not all browsers are created equal. Some browsers do have better privacy and security protection than, than others. The good news for you is that I've already ranked a bunch of popular browsers in, in another video, and you can find that link in the description as well uh, if you'd like to check that one out. All right, so by now you know that you need a strong password, uh, that you change frequently, and you should have uh, probably have different ones for each online account. That sounds like a lot, right? Well, enter rule number six. Team up with a password manager. Now, there are tons of, of password managers out there today, and some of them are great, um, but basically password managers are programs that fill in your logins and, well, manage all your passwords. It's sort of like having a, a little memory stick with you. So all you have to do is remember a, a master password to log into your password manager itself. Like I said, there are a bunch of options out there. So do a bit of research and pick the password manager that's right for you. Just make sure that your master password is really strong. But if the idea of, of research sounds a bit overwhelming, I do have a video on my top recommendations for cybersecurity products. And in that, I include my top password manager pick uh, in, in the video. So I'll link to that in the description uh, and feel free to check that out if you're looking for an ideal uh, manager that's best for you. Or if you're curious about other ways to improve your cybersecurity. And my last rule is whatever you do, never, ever, ever give someone else your password. Do not tell someone else your password, especially in an email or over the phone. Just don't do it. Don't. And remember that, that most reputable businesses like banks or phone companies will never send you an email asking for your password. All right, so those are my seven rules for a strong password. Remember, create different passwords for each site that you, uh, that you go to that are strong and regularly change, opt into two-step verification when you can, and disable autofill on your browsers, and take advantage of password managers to help, uh, you, help you track your passwords. And finally, keep those passwords to yourself. And you know, like I said earlier, there are many ways to improve your online security and privacy. For example, a VPN extension provides an additional layer of protection to encrypt your data and, and avoid IP leaks. Uh, my favorite one to use is, um, and continues to be, NordVPN. It's not only one of the safest VPNs, but it's affordable and it's easy to install and use. If you're interested in learning more about NordVPN, I have an in-depth review linked in the, uh, the description below. So that's it for today's video. If you found this uh, helpful, please leave a thumbs up as that always makes my day. And if you're a new subscriber, welcome to our cyber family. Be sure to let me know what topics you'd like me to talk about next in the comments. And as always, I really appreciate you watching and I look forward to interacting with you in the comments below.